Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Did you ever stop to think about after the flood, Noah had three sons. Well, those three sons and their wives were the only proclamators left on the earth. So they had to proclamate children. And those children came down through three lines, distinct lines, that are here today. They're all here today, every one of them, because, and they're prevalent, they're very prevalent. If you study, do a little study. Let's look at, let's just take a look at uh, Ham. Ham, there was Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And let's take a look at Ham. Ham was where the Canaanite people came from. They was, came from Canaan. And they were general servitude people. They were the seeds of, of um, Ham and Shem and Japheth. All were servitude people at first. They had to serve uh, in some way, shape, or form. Well, a servant of a servant. Now, there was a group of those three boys that became a servant of a servant. And that was uh, in uh, Ham's line. Now, Joshua... David, Solomon subdued them. They were uh, servants that subdued other servants, like Ham did. They, they were subduers of other servants. Alexandria, he was a subduer of people, yet he, he himself was a servant of a higher command, but he subdued great, he was a great subduer of the people. And uh, then we had the Romans, and they subdued everybody around them for thousands of miles. The Romans spread out thousands of miles. I told that story late on my uh, other things that I've talked about. Uh, the Romans would take 300, a quadrant of 300 soldier men, and they would retire them. And when they retired them, they'd give them their wife and their children, they'd give them what they needed, They'd give them housing, and they'd send them out. And that's how when Paul got to little cities, those little cities were started by a bank of Roman soldiers, 300 soldiers and their families, and they were predominantly Roman. And that's where the problem came in through the predominantly Roman uh, uh, people, even though uh, Paul won many Romans to the Lord, because Roman, uh, Paul was a Roman himself, and he knew Roman ways. And so he was able to do that. So, and we find also in Ham's line that there was a technological prophecy. The, they were technological people. Uh, the famous Christian uh, anthropologist Arthur C. Constant states that all of the earliest civilizations of not were founded, carried to the highest technical a proficiency by Hamatic people. Now, the, that is the Hamatic people had the highest efficiency of figuring out something. For instance, you remember the machinery that uh, they made uh, during wars, that, and they had a big horse that would do something, or they had bows and arrows, they had a machine that would shoot a large uh, a stick with a ball of fire on the end of it into a castle or into a place and these were Hamatic people. These were people that uh, probably the people that <clears throat> figured out the combustion engine that we have today were Hamatic type people. They had that sensibility about them. And then we have, let's look at concerning J-Path. What we have that came from J-Path. All right. Uh, uh, God shall enlarge Japheth, is what God said. And Japheth will dwell in tents. Well, <clears throat> a person that dwelled in tents was called a nomadic person. That means they followed the seasons of the year and they would pasture where the season was good for that period of time. In the spring, they'd be in a valley where the valley was beautiful and whatever, and they'd be able to go up on the mountain in late spring, early summer, and the grass would be good up there. And as fall came in, they would come back down off the mountains again into the pastures that still had enough grass and fodder for their 
their cows and whatever, and they were shepherds. And um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, God enlarged Japheth since 539 B.C. with the defeat of the Babylonians by Cyrus the Great, and the Semitic and the Hamic uh, race was seduced in breaking the world's supreme primacy by the uh, Japhethic area era. Uh, <clears throat> this glorious prophecy is full explained as Paul talks about it in Romans 11, 13 through 15. Paul talks about that. Let's take a look at Shem. Now Shem is blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Now Shem was the godly line. Here is the obviously a reference to the special favor bestowed upon Shem's descendants beginning with, listen to this, Abraham. Now Abraham was God's first chosen man to break the ice with the human race and come out and say, I am God's special person, hear me. And then he ended it in Bethlehem in the manger with Jesus. So Abraham was the picture of Jesus coming. He came out of the land of Ur. Remember Jesus was sent down into Egypt, came back out of Egypt, and uh, took over his rightly throne as God in the flesh, Jesus. Let's look at the threefold contribution of these three sons as far as races go. Well, first we know that Ham was technical. He, was, uh, he had uh, proficiency. He was, had responsibility of men's physical well-being. Now remember, that was Ham's group. That's where your doctors and physicians come from today. That's where their peace of mind comes from, their little bit of brain. You say, Brother Peter, what makes you say that? Well, we now have, in our day, a thing called genetics. And you know something? What's really odd? That they can't place one genetic from one person back to a monkey. But they can go back to Ham, Shem, and J-Path. They can go back to those three. And you take doctors and lawyers and people with uh, some intelligence there, you're going to trace them back to Ham. They've got that hammock gene in them. And then we got these other, j -path. We've got a, a different type of mental ability, and that is uh, an application of philosophy. That's a different person than a doctor. A doctor is kind of a philosopher, and Webby uses his hand. A real philosopher doesn't use anything but books, and he philosophizes and development of scientific methods. Now that's a man that is a philosopher of medicine. He uses his hands and he puts things together and he comes up with a reasonable, uh, something that works reasonably well for whatever it's to treat. And then we have another reasonable thing, it's just man's mental well-being. Now that's what these guys do. They work on stuff that would come up. I know they, when uh, my mother took care of all time of patients, that they came up with this set of steps and they showed the progression on those steps. They also didn't tell the general public that they could spend thousands of dollars and never, not ever, get above the second step. Never get above the second step. So it was futile and it was a waste of money. It was a way they funded their uh, ongoing work on the thing. They never really, really discovered anything that would take an Alzheimer's patient back out of Alzheimer's if they're a true Alzheimer's patient. All right, Shem, religious, he's insight. This is what we have. I'm from Shem, and I have biblical insight. Where'd it come from? It came from God. It was given to my family by God. And my family, the, 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 my name is Hutchins, and the Hutchins family have had biblical insight throughout the history of their uh, generations, back through, all the way back through my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my great-grandparents on my father's side have had biblical responsibility and men's spiritual well-being in mind. Now that's the group from Shem that came down. 
Now those three groups are still here today and they're still following suit today. And we'll go, uh, we'll go a little uh, further and we'll uh, back over here to where J-Path. Let's start with him. Uh, let's see, do we want to start with J-Path? Yeah, we'll start with J-Path. Uh, J-Path's descendants are the people that are founded in this part of the world. Listen to this. Goma was the country that J-Path set. And that is Germany. Today's Germany. And those are very intelligent people. The Germans, uh, if I tell you what you do, you take a Volkswagen, you buy a 1949 Volkswagen or a 1932 Volkswagen, and you can still be driving it today. Those things are indestructible, and the Germans made that thing. They also made it into a tank, into a motorcycle. They made it into a hundred different things. They made it to where it was amphibious. It could float. They made uh, tanks out of it. They did all kinds of stuff. These, that was the intellect of a German. They got it up there. And then we've got Magog and Tubal and Meshach. This is Russia. Now Russia has a demeanor that it's always had. It's never changed. It is suspicious. It has a suspicious nature. It's a very, very suspicious type of people. They're born that way. You can't change them. You can't change them. If you try to change a Russian, you, you might as well butt your head against a block wall because you're not going to change that person. Then we had the Medio Persians. Well, the Medio Persians, we find that what they do, and that what they do is they, they do not seem to have a place in them for the true and living God. They made a lot of their own selves gods. They made everything else gods, and they've, uh, but they have uh, v made very beautiful uh, rugs and blankets and quilts and stuff, and they have really done something. Then you have uh, Javan, that was Greece. Javan was settled too by Japath, and that was Greece. Now Greece, they're very, very proud people. The Greeks are very proud. They are, are puffed up, and they put their shoulders up, and they strut. The men strut in front of the women and uh, like a peacock, and uh, they do things that gr our Greeks are very, and their food is very good. They have a procured a type of food that's very good, and, and uh, they've done a lot of things that, that are good, but they do it within their own self. And then we have Tyrus. Now, Tyrus is Italy. Now, Italy, if you will look at Italy's past, Italy was a worker of stone. They were a worker of, of artwork, and they still are. And by the way, Greece does a little of that too, but Italy mainly is a place where you find uh, the great uh, Colosseums that were built. Uh, massive Colosseum were built from stone and rock, and they, they had an ability uh, that nobody else in the world seemed to have. And then you had Targamar, which is Armenia. Well, what is Armenia? Armenia, almost the name almost explains what it is. It's kind of like a spot in the earth lost in time. It's, it's there. It's kind of lost in time. Uh, can you be happy people lost? Yes, you can. The Armenians are working people. They're out there plowing. They got their horses, their wagons, their plows, their hay, hay rakes, their stuff. They have a, a very uh, happy, a very prosperous feeding their family, taking care of their family. Uh, and they have a very prosperous life in that sense of the word uh, there. And then we have uh, Tarsus, which is Spain. Now we know that Spain is a, a gaiety bunch of people. They're very, I'm not using that word like we have transferred it today to a group of people. I'm not using that word that way. The Bible uses the word gay as happy. The Bible uses that word that's been changed today by Americans. The Bible uses that word as gaiety, as uh, uh, fleeting, dancing, having fun, and a good time. And they're uh, juvenile uh, people and uh, just a good and then you have Kittim, which is Cyrus. And uh, Cyrus is a 
uh, a seacoast place, and it is a uh, a place of hierarchy. It's kind of like England in a way. We're going to talk about England in a few minutes, but it's a it's a there's a hierarchy, and uh, that that comes up that that flows uh, out of there. Now let's look at. We're going to go now over to uh, Ham, Ham's descendants. And uh, here's Ham's descendants. Uh, Ethiopia, that's Cush. Cush came, uh, some of his descendants and people, they found it would be uh, from Cush. Now, Cush is Ethiopia. Now, we know Ethiopia is predominantly an, a, in the uh, uh, African area. And uh, Egypt and Ethiopia was Mism, uh, Cush, Mism, and Put. And they were the uh, Ethiopian, Egypt, and Africa. And they were a mixed race of people originally from the other races. And they mixed together and came up with what we, they've came up with now. And we have people that are not totally black and they're not totally white. And they're different shades of color and their eyes are different some of them and their uh, ears are different and their, their lips and their teeth are different and there are different people in that area <clears throat> and you can tell that area's people when you meet them and then we had Canaan and made the Canaanites which were also the Palestinians and this is a a group of warlike people they are bred in the Assyrians from Babylon. Uh, the Palestinians and the Assyrians are very, very, uh, they're, they're kind of like Killabees. They have a, an instinct in them that says, if, if, if these people are in the way, get rid of them. Just mow them over, blow them up, throw a bomb in the middle. Has a bus full of some other group other than Palestinians coming through. Blow the bus up. Just, just get rid of them. And the Palestinians have always had a demeanor of that type. Then we had Sidon, where uh, Phoenicia is, and then the Hittites. Heath was the Hittites. And uh, the Hittites were, uh, remember now, they were, they were rough, rough folks too. <laughs> they, were, they were rough folks too. And the Phoenicians now, and Sidon, they were uh, a, a cross between different people, the Phoenicians. They were a group of people that were an influx of other people in Phoenicia there, in, in that place uh, where it was in Sidon. Remember, uh, Tyre and Sidon were on the, on the uh, lake. They were on the lake, and they had uh, uh, people coming in ships from all different places and they had all different kinds of dialects there and they had all different kinds of people there and then let's come on down to Jabus was the uh, Jabusites and they were the occupants of Jerusalem during the period of David now what were the occupants of Jerusalem like during the period of David it was a mixture of people in there. The city had more people in it than it should have had uh, during that period of time. It was overloaded with people. Now, we'll jump right from there into the uh, uh, P-I-L-I-S-T-I-M, the uh, Philistine area, which was where the Philistines came from. And uh, they possibly they were the founder of the Oriental people, China, Japan, and India. And uh, so we saw there again, here we've got, if we've got China, Japan, and India, we have three different complete looking people. They look completely different from each other, but they have a color that's close to each other. So we see they came down from that same line of people and they got mixed up back up here in where the Canaanites were and whatever you remember the Canaanites they just they took on people and they went places and they 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 took on villages and they say if you were 
if, if you just surrender, we'll put you under our umbrella. And so the people surrender and they put them under their umbrella. And that's how that was. And uh, all right, so let's come now to the one that we want to get to is Shem. And let's see what Shem had in line. Now Shem, his descendants were godly descendants. They came from Abraham. Of course, Abraham's father was in the land of Ur, and he was a uh, worshiper of small gods, little a or little g gods. They were just uh, gods like, for instance, that you put in your tent, or you put in your house, and you worship that god, and that god, before you went out every day, you prayed to that god, and that god could have the name of Zeus, or Jupiter, or, or one of the um, uh, today they have a thing they uh, they put out every day in a newspaper and they, people worship that thing. They say, oh, I can't go out today because my my so-and-so Zodiac thing says if I go out, I'm going to get killed today or something like <laughs> that. So, and that was what those little G gods were that those people had. They had a, a, a look-alike of something from there. Now through Abraham, Ishmael, Esau, the Middle East Arabs countries came about. Now all the Middle East came out of this man, Abraham. Anthropologist Arthur uh, Constantine writes this, concludes that from the family of Noah has sprung all the people of the world. Uh, uh, prehistoric and historic events described in connection with Genesis 6 to 10, those chapters, and uh, partially the um, prophetic statement of Noah himself in Genesis 9, 25 through 28, respect to the future of the three sons of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Together combined to prove us with the most reasonable account of the history of mankind a history which relates understood does not at all require us to believe that modern man began with a, a statue of an ape and only reached a civilization state after a long, long uh, evolutionary history, but made a fresh start as a single family who carried with them an unpeopled earth the uh, accumulated heritage of the pre-flood world. In summary, then that we have uh, inverted to show that the, this paper may be set forth briefly as follows. A geographical graphical distribution. Listen to this fossil remain is such that they are most logically explained by treating them marginal respectivity of the widespread and of the part of the forced depression of people from the single multiplied population established as a point more or less central to them all which sent forth successively and waves of migrants, each wave driving and uh, perverse one further toward the, uh, the end of that thing. And listen, there has been no, none. The, that, that, that skull they found uh, years ago, I, I studied all that one time and I forgot now what it was. And, but anyway, I uh, had no resemblance in a big sense of the word to a man's skull. Man's and monkey are totally different. And we have today, you could put a, a skull today on a computer's thing and spin it, and that computer will tell you instantly whether it's human or not, and whether there was a possibility for to ever exchange what it is to what, to what we are. You take a monkey skull and put it on there, ask the computer, what would be the possibility of that skull coming into this skull here and making it? And the computer will tell you there's no possibility. 
<laughs> There's no possibility. And yet there are those that want to march on that wall that that's where we came from. You know what? They haven't they don't want to research themselves out of a job. They could research themselves out of a job if they would look at it like it is and like I just said, put it in the computer and and turn it and spin it and do it and say, look, take this head and make it that one. They can't do it. Not even over a thousand years it wouldn't change. And they can't do it. But they're not going to do it because they lose their jobs now. Uh, the most degraded uh, spectrum of the uh, representative of these general movements who were driven to the last hospitable area where they suffered physical degeneration as a consequence of circumstance in which they were forced to live. Now, we do have people that got degenerated and we still have them. We even see on our television set this day and age whole countries that have been drove out by marauders 70 or 80 people with guns coming against a whole country without guns <coughs> and running them out of there and driving them out of there. Now, you've ever heard that saying that Mike makes right. Well, one man with a gun in a schoolhouse, he's the king. He doesn't have to worry. Well, well half a dozen, 80 men, do you know that Cuba was taken over by 80 people originally before when Cuba was a free country and a good country and everything that Castro came in there with 80 people 80 marauders they came in there and took that country and it's been that way ever since extraordinary physical abilities that remain streams from the fact that they were members of a small, isolated, strongly in bed band, whereas the culture, sim the, the link together, each with a widely dispersed of them, indicate a common origin of them all. There is a group of people. In every sect of people, there is. There is a group of people that fits this physical s side. Well, you say, where do they start, Peter? They start in a club and then a gang. They start with two, three in a gang, four in a gang, five in a gang. Now, they, now they've taken over like the Chicago, half of the city of Chicago is, you couldn't walk into it. If you or I walked in there, they would strip us of our clothes and lay a dead body uh, on the back. They'd take, throw it back on the other side, a dead body unidentified. They got thousands and thousands of them thousands and thousands of them identified no no nothing no marks no nothing if they got a gold tooth it's gone if they wore a pair of glasses they're gone everything that they had on them is stripped clothes and all and listen there are many cities like that right now throughout our american soil uh what is true of fossil man is equally true of the vanishing and the living primitive uh, societies. All these uh, into intellectually uh, dispersed populations are one basic stock. The Hamatic family of Genesis chapter 10 is about gone. Just about gone. That's, that's gone. Uh, they were subsequently displaced and overwhelmed by the Indo-European and the Japathics who never, uh, uh, nevertheless inherited or adopted and extensively built up the technology so gained the upper hand on each geographical area where they spread. Now what he's saying here is exactly what happened. Just exactly, he's just telling the truth right here what happened. They grew, the others didn't. So they overlapped. They overlapped. It's like a big storm coming out of the ocean and wiping out a whole country. 
I wipe out a whole city. And that, that's the way that, that works. It has that group. And they're like the ocean. The wave of them kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. I heard a story several, several, several years ago that China could put a thousand men on a ship or more and send it off every single solitary day of the year, 365 days a year from now until the stars fall out of heaven. Land on the shores of America with those thousand people. And what are you going to do with them? Within 10 days, you got 10,000. In 100 days, you got 100,000 on the shoreline. What are you going to do with them? You can't put them all in prison. You can't send them back. You don't have the money. You don't have the wherewithal. You don't have the time. Are you going to make the ship stay out to sea? What are you going to do? You're in trouble. You're in real trouble. And it can happen. It can happen. Because I think God's got China uh, where he's got him for a reason. Because uh, there's, uh, that day of Armageddon is coming. Throughout this movement, both in prehistoric and historic times, there were never any human beings who did not belong within the family of the Noah descendants. This is, a, this is a very, 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 very intelligent man right here that has spent his life looking at DNAs and descendants back through. And he has the ability to be able to tell you that every DNA on this earth goes back to those three boys. Finally, this thesis is strengthened by the evidence of history which shows that the migration has always tended to follow this pattern and has frequently been accompanied by instance of degeneration both of individual or whole tribes and usually results in establishment of a general pattern of culture. Relationships which are parallel to those that archaeologists have since revolted from antiquity. Look, there are still cannibal tribes on this earth. There are still cannibal tribes on this earth. It was never designed for one man to eat another man. That was never the design. We were to eat the herbs of the trees and the land. And by the way, there are people, I, we have a missionary come here that tells me personally, he's a pig, I can go into the jungle with nothing. And I can walk out a year later living. I know what tree limbs I can eat. I know what leaves I can eat. I know what grass I can eat. I know what bugs I can eat. I know what I can eat that I can get with my hands that will keep me healthy, keep me alive, and I don't have to eat another human being. And that's the way with those other humans. They wouldn't have to if they, they didn't. Now, uh, that was the end of that scenario right there. And we're going to call it uh, an end right there because the next question and answer about Genesis chapter 1 through 11 is coming up. And I'm going to do that later but this is the one right now on the Noah the question about Noah and the flood and the descendants and all right we'll see you next time bye bye